I mean, I'm a better man on the water. I think on land, I'm just like a petty little jerk, right? And, but the water things just, you know, the, 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 the stress and in some ways the alienation and the emptiness of what's happening on land just disappear. Uh, I grew up in a little fishing village in Newfoundland, Canada. Well, I was an outport kid, just kicking around, dirty. <laughs> no one could understand me, you know, when I went other places because of thick accent. And um, just, you know, just lived and died for fish. My first job in the Bering Sea, they gave me a shotgun. And uh, uh, my job was just to shoot as many seagulls as possible. And by the way, that was a good job. It was like, there's <laughs> nothing like being a kid and, and, and you're getting paid for that. While I was in the Bering Sea, um, you know, on the trawlers, the cod stocks crashed back home in Newfoundland where I was from. And, you know, thousands of people thrown out of work, boats beached, canneries emptied. And I think that's where I began to understand that Sort of, there'll be no jobs on a dead planet. I mean, you know, I'm not an environmentalist. I'm a hunter. The goal is to die in my boat one day, right? And to die in my boat one day working, the oceans have to stay alive. Right, so suddenly, my job as a fisherman isn't to chase fish. It's no longer to be a hunter-gatherer, but rather encourage, sort of be a steward of Mother Nature's. You know, I call it 3D ocean farming. Imagine an underwater garden where you have a whole mix of species growing below the surface. And just think of a, you know, a rope scaffolding system. And from those ropes we grow our uh, kelp vertically downwards. Next to that, we have mussel socks. Scallops and lantern nets. And then we have oysters and cages. There used to be trillions of oysters on the East Coast. You'd actually have to navigate your boats around oyster reefs. Those oyster reefs are all gone, most of them. Our farms are, are the replacement for that. The best fishing in the area is on our farm. We get, you know, uh, striped bass, bluefish. I find seahorses, a lot of blue crab, and the ducks have been showing up incredibly because they like the the mussels. We've had a lot of seals, so you know, amongst the the critters, the word has gotten out. What's amazing about shellfish and seaweeds from a food perspective is that they require zero inputs. So no fresh water, no feed, no fertilizer, no land, which makes it the most sustainable food on the planet. The other thing is zero input food in the emerging climate economy is gonna be the most affordable food on the planet. And so it's not just gonna be for elite restaurants. It'll be at some point sort of everyday food. I mean, when I started this, I was getting laughed off the docks. There's no, no question about it. who wants to grow uh, vegetables uh, underwater. Over time, I think there's been more interest because there's less fish, right? So we have meetings and, and uh, you know, 40 or 50 fishermen will, sh will show up. We've requested to start farms in every coastal state in North America, 20 countries around the world. There's sort of this tsunami of support. The World Bank did a study and if you were to take less than 5% of U.S. waters, you could create 50 million jobs. The scale here is stunning. The oceans are the gigantic place. We can just grow a lot of food. And really, if you care about the revival of the middle class, if you, if you care about rebuilding the American economy, then you want to move to the ocean. You want to start farming, uh, but farming it the right way. <laughs>